opposed to cave selected species, our selected species don't remain near carrying capacity and are defined by rapid and explosive reproduction rates. Our species are also defined by short lifespans and short reproductive maturity, numerous reproductive events in offspring, and little parental care. They also have fast population growth rates. An example of an our selected species is mice. Okie dokie. Our selected species are opposite to case selected species. Our selected species don't remain... Ah! Bears, cats, and humans all grow up in comfortable environments and can therefore put more energy into reproduction. Their offspring, in turn, live longer, are more secure, and more likely to survive. However, there are less of them, as the energy required to produce them is so much greater than in our selected species. The competitive exclusion principle states that two species that compete for the exact same resources cannot stably coexist. An example of the competitive exclusion principle is the red and gray squirrels in Great Britain. When the gray squirrel was introduced to Britain, they easily adapted, taking the red squirrel's resources and causing their population to decline. Resource partitioning is when two species divide a resource based on differences in the species behavior. For example, when Anolis lizards of different species can occupy the same tree because different sized lizards rely on different resources. Predation involves two organisms, the predator and the prey, and is defined as the use of one species as a resource by another species. There are four types of predators, true predator, herbivore, parasite, and parasitoid. In the photo, a tomato hornworm is covered with cocoons of pupating braconid wasps. The braconid wasp is considered a parasitoid of the hornworm because it causes the hornworm to die as it pupates. Mutualism is a relationship where one species benefits and the other is unaffected. An example of this is when pilot fish eat the bacteria off the shark, which helps the shark be hygienic and the fish get food and protection. Commensalism is one of the symbiotic relationships. It occurs when one species in a relationship receives some benefit while the other is neither positively nor negatively affected. If this confuses you, think of it as two students. One student does all the work on an assignment while the other just copies everything. The first student is neither positively nor negatively affected at all by the second student's actions other than being annoyed, while the second student gets free work. An epithet is a specific category of plant. They attach on bigger, stronger plants and survive on nutrients and water from the atmosphere around them. Epithets are not attached to the ground. Moss connected to a tree is an example of an epithet. Elementalism is when one species suffers and the other interacting species experiences no effect. An example of a mentalism would be a big tree blocking the sunlight of a nearby plant. The tree is unaffected, but the plant is harmed because it doesn't receive as much sunlight as it should. A keystone species is a species that the ecosystem relies upon to remain diverse. Robert Payne coined this term in his research on ecosystems in the Pacific Northwest. After studying them in a controlled experiment, he found that three months without the, the disaster starfish, a barnacle took over 60 to 80 percent of the space that used to be dominated by the starfish. Nine months later, it was replaced by another barnacle and a mussel. Then it continued until less and less species thrived in that habitat. Some species even had to leave the ecosystem because of it. Without the disaster squid, the ecosystem went from 15 species down to 8. So my word is allelopathy, and basically it is where an organism makes biochemicals that influence the growth, survival rate, and reproduction rate of other organisms. This definition is relatively simple when you have an example, such as the tree of heaven. In its roots, it can produce allelo chemicals that play a crucial role in the growth of many other plants.
Species that are ecosystem engineers are extremely important. They drastically influence their habitat, almost single-handedly altering their surroundings. There are two kinds, allogenic, which physically alters the material around them, and autogenic, which change the environment through their own physical structure. Think of plants. The cutest little example of this is the minions from Despicable Me. Those guys do everything.